Hello. My name is Ophelia Moore, and I have practiced yoga since 1990s when I was 19 years old. I am a yoga teacher with US Yoga Academy from United States, and I'm certified yoga teacher by the Atman International Federation of Yoga and Meditation. And I have been teaching yoga in the United States in the state of Iowa since 2009. To enhance the effects of my yoga practice, I started fasting as a way to purify my body, to refine my energies and achieve higher states of consciousness. I started to do water fasting one day a week. And often I was doing longer fasting periods. As part of my fasting practice, in the winter of 1991, I became vegetarian. In 2010, I, I started practicing and experiencing with vegan and raw vegan diet for a while. Being passionate about nutrition and a healthy lifestyle, in 2012, I became a health coach and a nutritional counselor certified by the Institute of Integrative Nutrition in New York. In this lecture, I'll present you the benefits of fasting for health, emotional balance, burning karma, and spiritual evolution. I'll show you how fasting is miraculous for unlocking the profound, regenerating, and healing powers of your body. Fasting helps refine and purify your subtle energy structures, thus being a staple of any endeavor of spiritual transformation. I'll introduce you to different types of fasting and you'll learn the practical keys of success in this practice. I'll also share with you my personal experience and the amazing benefits observed through years of intermittent fasting. This presentation has two mottos. We eat to live, not live to eat, and feast and fast which represents the ideal way of eating, which is closer to our ancestors, feast and fast. When people and animals are sick, they lose their appetite and refuse to eat. We usually heal much faster when we abstain from food. And I'm sure everybody encountered this situation when they were sick, they didn't have no appetite to eat. But if they're eating, they're feeling even worse. So it was better not to eat because the body has actual intelligence and knows when to tell you that fasting can heal us. So especially when we are sick. What fasting is? Fasting consists in abstaining from some or all food and drink, except water or both, for a certain time. Fasting can be observed individually or as a group. The health benefits of fasting. The philosopher Socrates was asked why he was fasting. His answer was, because it makes me think clearly. Fasting is the key to unlock the nature storehouse of energy. Fasting gives you increased energy and vitality. Through consistent fasting, your mind becomes stronger and more, more positive. Your anxiety and fear will reduce and you develop self-control and discipline. Fasting purifies your body, mind and soul. And even though it sounds paradoxical, the fasting, it is indeed the key to unlock our energy, and even though we don't eat, we will notice that fasting will give us more energy and vitality because it allows us to resonate with external energies from the universe, which basically are charging our subtle energetic structures. Nature intended us to be happy, well-balanced, free of fears, frustrations, stress and tension. You want your body is cleansed through fasting and you are living a natural and healthy life, you'll feel wonderful most of the time. Fasting helps you maintain a healthy body weight. It can prevent many common modern diseases such as obesity, diabetes, 
cancer, heart disease, arthritis, food allergies, and autoimmune diseases. Intermittent fasting, sustained for a longer period of time, boosts the production of human growth hormone, HGH, thus allowing us to thrive on a very low calorie diet, leading to weight loss, especially shedding the belly fat without the need of very expensive HGH treatments. And if any of you try those, you'll see that they are very expensive and basically achieve absolutely the same results as intermittent fasting. Actually, as a personal experience, uh, a friend of mine was doing this treatment while I was fasting. And we observed that actually I was losing more weight, but the general um, body reactions were very, very similar. The ability to um, survive on a very low calorie diet, the lack of appetite in a sense that you are not craving and you're not feeling hungry anymore and uh, uh, don't require so much food. Fasting helps to repair the DNA and restores youthfulness. Stem cells begin to activate after three days of water fasting. And probably all of you heard now the modern um, treatments of the stem cells, which are very, very expensive. And uh, in some countries they are not even allowed yet, but um, fasting can help and activate actually to activate the stem cells, start a regenerating process of your body. Fasting makes the body light, agile, and free of unpleasant body odors. The skin becomes radiant and clear and the eyes bright. Fasting helps all organs to restore their optimal function. Fasting makes the blood become thinner, but for this, we need to drink a lot of water, much more than usual. After an adequate period of fasting, the body starts to eliminate the gunk out of the cells. So the absorption of new fresh nutrients is more efficient. You will need less and less insulin for digestion. This will lead to weight loss and improved metabolism. When blood cells and the entire body function optimally, they are more forgiving when you occasionally eat unhealthy foods. The body can process and transform them in necessary nutrients more efficiently. So the water is the agent that starts the chemical reaction in our cells. So you have to drink plenty of water. If you experience headache, dizziness, weakness during the water fasting, the best solution is to drink lots of water. Headache comes from tox the toxins released in your blood, which are not able to be flushed out. We need water to clean them, them out of the body. So as we see here, we talk a lot about the water and water indeed is the key element that starts the reactions, the chemical reactions our cells. And it's very important to drink a lot of water when you fast. So it's not recommended to do the dry fasting without water because it can lead to all kinds of health issues, including heart issues. To fast without unpleasant side effects, you have to achieve a state of ketosis. Ketosis is when your body starts to use fat to produce energy. This happens after a period of longer fasting or after a special diet called the keto diet. Fat is dissolved into triglycerides, which deliver transforms in ketones. Ketones, not the sugar, become the real energy that fuels the cells, including brain cells. This is why you can have more mental clarity during water fasting, because the ketones stimulate the brain functions. The ketone starts to activate after 18 hours of water fasting. And actually that's how the keto diet was, was discovered was used in uh, children with um, epilepsy. And they noticed that those children were able to manage their symptoms much better if they were on a very long term keto diet. And they realized that this keto diet was helping their brain very much to um, avoid the seizures. And from here, the keto diet started because they realized that uh, these children were burning fat, which are fueling mostly their brain. 
So it is extremely, extremely healthy diet because it stimulates the brain. And uh, these ketones use the fat stored in the body as energy. The insulin levels are more important than sugar levels. You need to reduce the insulin level from the blood to improve digestion, nutrients assimilation, and organ functions. Fasting reduces inflammation and water retention. Sometimes during fasting, you can eliminate more water from your body than you are drinking. This is a very important element that indeed you can eliminate more water from your body than you are drinking. And in this way, you also can lose weight because a lot of weight we have, it's water, it's adipose tissue, it's water stored in the body. Insulin binds with the water cells. When the insulin levels reduces, the water is released. So that's how we start to lose weight. We reduce the insulin levels and this will lead to elimination of the water, the excess water. The insulin is the key to unlock the energy stored in the, stored in the cells. The insulin in itself does not give us energy. To be able to fast for longer than 36 hour, hours period, we need training. So it's important to remember this, to be able to fast for longer periods than 36 hours, we need some training. Don't jump into longer, long fasting periods because you'll put your body in shock and then you'll feel bad and you'll not want to fast anymore. The best way to train our body for longer water fasting is to do in daily intermittent fasting. We can eat larger meals within a period of six, eight hours. And for the rest of the day, we fast, no snacks. So this is a very important aspect to eat larger meals within this period we choose, and then to not snack for the rest of the time. This way you can reach the state of daily ketosis. Eventually you can expand the 16 hour periods of intermittent daily fasting to longer time. The feast and fast seems to be an appropriate way to eat closer as our ancestors used to eat. And for more details, of the biochemical effects of fasting, please refer to Dr. Pradeep Jamdas lecture on YouTube, Fasting for Survival. He has a, about an hour and a half of presentation called Fasting for Survival. And also he's saying that uh, even though our diet changed extremely in the last uh, couple thousand years, let's say, our genetics did not. So because uh, the genetics uh, change much slower, we still have the genetics of our ancestors. So we should eat more appropriate to that period, to older times. Fasting as a religious and spiritual practice. From yoga and tantra perspective, fasting can grant you the connection with the divine inner self, Atman, and helps you access higher states of consciousness. You can be blissful most of the time. And how this can happen? It happens because uh, your mind becomes more clear. You'll be able to meditate and do deeper introspections. Your body is much lighter, so you can practice yoga poses and breathing techniques much easier, which will increase your ability to expand your consciousness as well as meditation for expansion of consciousness, if your mind is clear. It speeds up this process of spiritual evolution. Most of the world's religions promote fasting on a certain occasions for spiritual and health benefits. For example, the Christian tradition. In the Christian Orthodox Church, fasting, which, are, which is called Advent and Lent, they are two forms of fasting, is recommended for 40 days before Christmas and Easter. Fasting prepares the body and the soul to receive the special energies that manifest during these holidays. During this time, a vegan diet is required with a few days when fish is allowed. No alcohol is allowed either. Some Christians just give up something they really enjoy, such as cakes or chocolate. 
Fasting in Judaism is defined as a complete abstaining from all food and drinks. A full day of fasting begins at sunset in the evening and continues through darkness of the next day. A minor fast day begins with the dawn and concludes the darkness. In the Islamic tradition, the fast of Ramadan, which is in June and July, it is a period of almost a month between these two uh, months, sometimes between June and July, is one of the most important holidays in the Islamic tradition and is prepared by fasting. Between dawn and sunset, devotees abstain from all food and drink, except for just water, for the entire period of Ramadan. Let's see now the types of fasting. Some people refrain from some animal products, such as meat and meat products. And here we uh, see the vegetarian diet. So vegetarian diet is when we abstain from meat and meat products. Some other people abstain from dairy and other animal products, such eggs, milk products, and all meats. And now we can go into the vegan diet. Then we have much more serious forms of fasting like juice fasting, which means drinking only fruits or vegetable juices and water from cleansing purposes for certain periods of time. For example, for one day, only juice for three days, for seven days, etc. You can basically adjust your own time according to your needs. During these days, you drink only juice. It is important that juice to be mixed with some water, one part juice, one part water, because in this way, the body will absorb it easier. The juice is extremely concentrated in nutrients and it's very important to be absorbed as good as possible to the cellular level. Water fasting, drinking water only. This is the water fasting. Mahatma Gandhi used water fasting to help him achieve peace in his country. He often asked his countrymen to join him in collective water fasting as a peaceful protest against the English occupation. And then we have intermittent fasting, which represents eating only within a certain period every day. For example, between noon and 6 p.m. within a period of six hours. Now we can uh, go to see the benefits of prolonged water fasting, which represents water fasting between 24 and 36 hours or longer. This is considered an act of abstinence. For one day a week, you might abstain from all food, drinking water only. This is called the water fast. So this type of fasting is a way of integrating the spiritual discipline of fasting into your life on an ongoing basis. Gives the digestive system a break so toxins can be cleaned out of the body. Extended water fast lasts, let's say, for three days in a row at every change of the season. Or you can fast two, three days a week, alternative, for example, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. The extended water fast can be longer than three, three days, of course, can be five days, seven days. Some people go fast 20 some days and even 40 days. I think 40 days, it's um, probably the longest period you can fast and you can fast safely 40 days, drinking only water. Fasting as a tapas, for example, you make a commitment to fast one day a week until you achieve a certain goal. And here it is very good to determine exactly your goals and fast specifically to achieve those goals. So you don't stop the tapas until you achieve your goal. Then we have occasional group fasts, which are when a family, a group of friends, church members, yoga students decide to fast together, usually for a common goal, such as group or individual healing, spiritual transformation, or world peace. And now let's see a few elements of esoteric astrology, the correlation between fasting and the days of the week. Water fasting can be done one, two, or three times per week. You can consecrate the fasting effort to God for a goal you want to achieve. You do this for a determined period of time or until the desired results appear. This method awakens the inner fire, 
harmonizes the body weight and leads to the assimilation of certain beneficial energies according to the esoteric astrology. Specific energies manifest during each day of the week, while a fasting can make us more receptive towards these energies. So now let's see what types of resonance creates fasting on each day of the week. For example, Monday creates resonance with the moon, increases sensitivity and receptivity, can help harmonize relationships, amplifies femininity. It's not recommended to do it very often because it can lead to mediumistic effects. Tuesday creates resonance with Mars, considered the lesser malefic eliminates violent karma, amplifies masculinity, dynamism, and courage. Wednesday creates resonance with Mercury, increases mental harmony, dynamism, and intelligence, brings abundance at the material level. Thursday creates resonance with Jupiter, considered the greater benefic. It helps achieve overall well-being. Friday creates resonance with Venus, generates inner harmony, love, inner peace, and happiness, helps harmonize our love relationships and creates emotional healing. Saturday creates resonance with Saturn, considered the greater malefic. It's recommended when we have problems in most aspects of our lives. Can help burn collective violent karma, such as finding ourselves in war and disaster areas. Sunday creates resonance with the energies of the sun, increases the awareness, the capacity to focus, and amplifies the spiritual aspiration. Has a purifying spiritual effect, facilitating the connection with God. And now let's see other fasting types you can integrate in your life periodically. For example, citrix fasting for lymph glands. For three days in a row, you drink daily a half a gallon of citric juice, juices from oranges, grapefruits, lemons, limes, all mixed with a half a gallon of water. You drink this quantity, a gallon of liquid during the whole day. If you get hungry in the evening, you can eat a few citric fruit slices. Also in the evening, drink a glass of water mixed with one tablespoon of Epsom salt. This fasting helps to cleanse the lymph and strengthens the immunity. It is mentioned that in three days, all the lymph is changed and purified. Now another form of fasting, which is called the Oshawa diet. Dr. Oshawa was a Japanese doctor who developed many therapeutic diets and experimented with them with great success in his Japan clinic. He created this diet called number seven, which consists of 10 days of a specific diet. You will eat only the following cereals, wheat, millet, buckwheat, and rice. You can cook them in any way you like and eat as much as you like. A variation of this diet for people who have grains intolerance is to consume only apples for 10 days. Apples can be consumed fresh, baked, or as juice. The Oshava diet increases the solar masculine yang energy in our being and strengthens the immunity. It has been successfully used for patients with a compromised immune system. It is mentioned that in 10 days, all the blood is changed and purified. And now let's see a few practical advices from personal practice. When fasting, drink a lot of water. Water flushes out the toxins, it keeps the blood from thickening. Probably you already noticed from this presentation that the water is very important. Drink a lot of water when you fast. Add to your fast drinking water a few drops of trace minerals and a few granules of salt. For example, the concentration of salt is for a gallon of water, one quart teaspoon of salt of pink Himalayan salt. If you add Trace minerals and a little bit of salt will help you to eliminate maybe lightheaded and dizziness during uh, longer periods of water fasting. Will help you be more grounded, will help all your body functions. When attempting to fast, start gradually. 
Do not begin with three days of water fast. Start water fasting for half a day, for example, and skip the breakfast. Next time, fast until 6 p.m., for example, skipping the lunch. Next time, fast until 9 p.m., and so on. Try to adjust yourself to whatever time is better for you. So fast for a while, skipping the breakfast, and stay with this time until you feel comfortable enough and you feel like your body can handle. Then move to skip the lunch and stay with this time for a while until you feel very comfortable and then move on. Don't force yourself. When fasting, you must monitor yourself and your well being. If the blood sugar drops too much, you might get headaches. This can be helped by drinking more water and take a walk in nature. Drink plenty of water to avoid dehydration. If the discomfort is not going away, break your fast and eat fruits or honey. Sometimes the discomfort comes that the blood sugar drops too low, your body is not used to handle that and makes you feel like headed, makes you feel dizzy, makes you feel very hungry maybe sometimes. That's okay, it does can happen in the beginning, is no way to get upset about it. Just monitor yourself and if you don't feel good, don't suffer. Break your fast with some very light food. Your first meal after fast should be very light, such as green juices, soups, well-cooked veggies. As your digestive system was taking a break, make sure you don't put it to work very, very hard. So eat something very light. Avoid fruit juices because of the high content of sugar. So if you uh, want to drink juices, you can drink veggie juices or green juices. These are the best. A few benefits I observe after personal experience with fasting. I notice that I can keep the body weight under control more easily when I fast regularly. This is something I observed that if I stick with the regime of fasting very regular, then now I can keep my body weight much better under control. I noticed that I have increased energy, which might sound paradoxical. My life doesn't stop when I fast even longer periods of time. The life goes on as normal, even on the days I don't eat. For example, right now, uh, my fasting uh, regimen is three days a week. I don't eat Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, and I don't eat 36 hours or even more for each time. For example, I don't eat nothing from Tuesday night to Thursday around noon, from Thursday night until Saturday around noon, and from Saturday night till about Monday morning, Monday around noon sometimes. So even in these cases, I don't feel like I'm tired and I don't have to stop my regular activity. And actually, I feel a lot of energy. I notice also that sensitivity towards subtle energies is increased. And I'm able to be aware of higher and more subtle energy vibrations. I have a general state of happiness, calmness, mental clarity, and harmony, which are more obvious on some fasting days. I notice that I can achieve my goals more easily when I fast for them. And this is an extraordinary tool which I encourage all of you to use. When you have a special goal, you want to pass a test or you have an important meeting or you want to achieve other goals which are taking longer time to prepare for, consecrate the fruits of your efforts to God and ask and return the energy of your fasting to be directed towards that goal. Uh, that's what I do, and I notice that I'm always successful, sometimes faster or sooner than others. The time is not so important as the fact that I actually achieve my goals. And now I will answer to a few questions which were addressed to me during the previous presentations. So the first question, it is, um, why sometimes it is difficult for us to fast, even for a short time, and other times we have no problem fasting for several days? 
And the answer is, our ability to fast is influenced by multiple factors. For example, feeling weak, tired, or having headaches during fasting can be a sign that our body begins to detox and the toxins cannot be eliminated fast enough from our blood. In this case, we need to rest, sleep, drink plenty of water, walk in the nature, and practice easy yoga poses and breathing exercises. If our body is nutrient deficient, fasting heightens this deficiency. If the discomfort we experience during fasting does not go away with the above suggested methods, then it might be a good idea to do some blood tests, which can be ordered by our regular doctor. Check for hormonal imbalances, mineral and vitamin deficiencies, and for all major health markers. First, we should fix these issues with proper nutrition, natural remedies and supplements, and then resume our fasting practice. Also, it is very important to have a healthy, varied, and adequate nutrition in the days when we eat. For example, the diet of many vegetarians is based on bread, cheese, pizza, overcooked veggies, and desserts full of sugar. If we eat junk food as a staple diet, with lots of refined sugars and carbs, the insulin levels in our blood will be highly elevated during fasting. This will generate headaches, hunger pangs, dizziness, and overall discomfort. A healthy, balanced diet based on whole grains, lots of greens, and lots of raw fruits and vegetables, and healthy vegetarian protein sources is more supportive for a lifestyle with integrated fasting periods. The keto diet, which consists mostly of veggies and healthy fats, and includes a small amount of protein and carbs, can help you train your body for fasting and does not create blood glucose spikes. Another question. How do I know I'm in a ketosis state during fasting? Answer. The ketosis is a metabolic state in which the body burns fat instead of carbs to produce energy. To determine your ketones level, you can use ketone testing kits like the one in the picture. They look very much like blood sugar readers used by diabetics. Here are some physical signs of the ketosis state. Your breath has a fruity smell, sometimes a bad smell. This is caused by elevated ketone levels. This is caused by acetone, a ketone that is eliminated from the body through urine and breath. Also, you can experience weight loss. That's because the fat starts to dissolve and the water is eliminated from the body. We notice reduced appetite and reduced sensations of hunger. Increased ketones level in breath, blood, and urine, which can be measured with the reader shown in the picture or different readers. Increased focus and energy. Short-term fatigue. The initial switch to a ketogenic state can include weakness and fatigue. This often causes people to quit the fasting before they get into full ketosis and can reap the long-term benefits. If um, at the beginning of our fasting practice we start to feel sluggish and sleepy, instead to eat, it's good to actually sleep, to rest, practice yoga, bring exercises, walk in nature like we mentioned before, until these sensations will disappear. Usually they are not very bad. So if we can make it through the day, if only these sensations appear, if we can make it, eventually they will disappear and we will experience the increased focus and energy. Another question. You mentioned in the lecture that it's very important to drink plenty of water during fasting. But in my case, I feel that I demineralize my body if I drink too much water when I fast. How can I drink water to hydrate myself and flush out the toxins without losing minerals? The best way to keep your minerals to optimal levels during fasting is to add trace minerals and salt to your drinking water. The salt concentration is one quart teaspoon of salt to a gallon of water. For trace minerals, follow the label's instructions. Also, you can drink directly mineral water you can purchase in the stores. And the last question, can you explain what autophagy is? The term autophagy derives from the ancient Greek for self-eating. This cellular process is complex and it is believed to be induced by fasting and calorie restriction diets. 
When cells are kept for a while in a state of starvation, they start to devour themselves, removing unwanted components and dysfunctional parts. Sometimes the cells destroy these parts, other times they recycle them into new necessary components. Autophagy causes the body cells to clean out and recycle any unnecessary or damaged parts. Some animal study suggests that short-term fasting can induce autophagy in brain cells. It is believed that autophagy might protect us against neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer and Parkinson's diseases, cancer and autoimmune diseases. For people who are too frail due to age, convalescent, or their weight is below normal, fasting will induce autophagy of the muscle cells. For this reason, fasting should be done carefully, constantly monitoring our health and well-being. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I wish you a lot of success in uh, fasting. I would encourage you to fast uh, seriously and consistently because it's a wonderful practice. Just be very mindful with your body, listen to your body. Also fasting will help you get in tune with your body and listen to your body messages so you know when to do it and when not to do it. It's very important to know when not to do it. But when you do it, you'll see that if you listen to your body signals, you'll have a wonderful experience. Thank you so much for your time and good luck and success in your fasting practice.